Hey, it's Nick from Lamar Plus Nick, and today I'm talking to you about frame rates and how RED does resolution changes. I'm also trying to give you some longer takes so you can soak up the footage a bit easier as opposed to an edit that's cutting around a lot. But I'll also be uploading another video soon with just shots that I've accumulated since I got the camera. Since the Komodo has been in the public eye, there have been a lot of people that are coming from other camera systems, especially DSLRs, that are asking about stepping down resolution in favor of frame rates, but they still want the full sensor size. But the thing that's different about RED and other, other cameras that they shoot RAW is that they come from a baseline of giving you the most untouched image that they can, as opposed to those other camera systems that give you a somewhat baked in color and look. Basically, there's two ways they can give you higher frame rates. The first is some form of line skipping or pixel binning. Those are two different methods, but the gist is it takes time for the camera to read the rows of pixels on the sensor. The more rows to read, the longer it takes to read a single frame. Once you know how long that takes, you can determine the fastest frame rate the camera can shoot. If you skip some of these rows of pixels, it takes less time to read the data from the sensor and you can up your frame rate. This is exactly why RED doesn't do this. It's impossible to use this method and shoot RAW. By definition, RAW is supposed to be direct image data from the camera sensor with no loss of quality or alteration. So if you're throwing away pixels and computing a way to make that image seamless, you're altering the image. So that's why RED uses the second method, which is cropping into the center of the sensor. This allows for higher frame rates at a lower resolution and you still get true raw files. This does come with the trade-off of also cropping into the center of your lens, changing your field of view, effectively changing the focal length of your lens. So that's the downside of this. If you need to crop in to use a higher frame rate and you don't have a wide enough lens, then you're gonna have what looks like a really long lens when you're shooting the slow-mo. For example, here's a shot with the Canon 24 to 70 set to 24 millimeters with the camera at 6K. Now, if I crop into 4K, I can shoot 60 FPS if I want. The trade-off is that my 24 millimeter is now more of a 37 millimeter in frame size. Here's the comparison with my camera at 6K and my lens zoomed in to match the frame from the 4K shot. I know this isn't exactly scientifically correct, I'm just trying to give you an example of how it matches up. This can be a problem if you're limited in what lenses you have, but if you plan for your shoot and bring an extra lens, you know you're gonna shoot some slow-mo, you can uh, plan accordingly for the shoot. It really isn't that bad. I do understand why someone would look at the, this part of the camera and be a little bit upset about it, but honestly, as somebody who's been using RED's cameras for years, you just really don't encounter or that many problems with it. Anytime I'm doing slow-mo, I'm usually planning for it. So I just know that I have to have a wider lens for that shot and it's all good. I've seen a bunch of comments about people's like deal breaker for a camera being 4K, 120 FPS, and if the camera doesn't have it, then they don't want the camera. Here's the deal. My iPhone shoots 4K 120, but that doesn't mean it's great footage. As far as I can tell, there aren't many cameras that even shoot 4K 120 RAW. If they do, then it's like a lot more money. It's a totally different category of cameras. Um, but if we look closer to like the 5K to 6K price point, like the Komodo's in, we're looking at like quite a loss in color depth in most cases. Like the brand new Sony a7S III does have 4K 120, but the color space is 422 10-bit. And that may be totally fine for a lot of people, and I'm sure it will be, but when you want to get raw out of the a7S III, you're looking at having to use an external recorder, and you're only gonna get 4K 60 FPS, which brings it right in line with the Komodo. Granted, that camera's about $3,500, so maybe that works better for you. But honestly, unless you're shooting sports or a special shot for a narrative or something, 120 FPS is oftentimes way too slow. If I were to pick a feature that was a deal breaker for a camera, it definitely would not be specifically 4K 120. As an example, here's some stuff that we shot for a project about seven years ago. We actually needed to shoot 240 FPS, so we shot on a Red Epic at 2K 
240 FPS. So even then, 120 FPS wasn't good enough for what we wanted, and we could have shot at 4K 120 on that camera. I bring this up just to say, sometimes I, I have actually needed footage that slow, but I, I still resorted to borrowing or renting a camera. You know, like when you're talking about footage that slow while actually keeping the quality you want, it very much is a specific feature for specific jobs. I'm not trying to convince you that you'll never need 120 FPS at 4K. I think that footage looks great. And if you have a project that needs that, then you know you gotta get the right camera for the, for the job. But I think it's important to keep the types of projects that you'll be doing most often in mind when you're buying a camera. And that may even mean that you don't need 6K RAW with a global shutter like the Komodo has. Anyways, here are more shots to look at while I step through the resolutions and frame rates. Keep in mind, RED is updating the camera, so they may add more options for resolutions, like currently there's no 3K. Uh, so yeah, so they may add some of the, some more resolution options and frame rate options in future firmware updates, but this is what's in the camera currently. Stay tuned for the next video uh, I do on the Komodo, which will be a look at rolling shutter versus global shutter. I have a couple scenarios planned for that, and I think it'll be a pretty good comparison video. I'm pretty interested to hear what people are shooting when they're shooting 120 FPS. Because uh, like I said, personally, there's only been really specific instances in which I need that. So if you feel like leaving a comment and telling me what you're shooting, uh, yeah, I'd love to hear about it. And other than that, thanks for watching. Later.